Today we're going to be talking about the Kodak Mini Shot 2. Yeah, this may look familiar to you because about a year ago, almost to the day, I did a full breakdown review, real world use actually, of the Kodak Retro 3. Yes, this is a smaller version of this guy. It's got some quirks that I want to talk about. Let's, let's dive into it. You know the type of guy that was a jock in high school but ended up becoming a huge nerd? You know, someone that's not afraid to make a fool of themselves on the internet. And someone that likes to shoot Polaroid a little too much. Did I say huge nerd? You know, just an ordinary, everyday guy. Well, that's me. I'm just another Chris. Welcome in today's video. Uh, first things first, Kodak did send me this camera to test out. Actually, they sent me this one too back in the day, but I'm not being paid by any means. My thoughts are my own and yeah, so let's uh, let's get into it. This is a camera, really cool. It's a digital camera, it's not film. Don't get it confused. <laughs> a lot of people got this confused. It's not film. This is a dye sublimation printer. You know, I've talked about those in the past, but a much, much smaller version. Plus it has a built-in camera, which honestly in overall, it is a really cool thing, but there's a lot of downsides to this. And I've had this in my possession for the past month and a half, maybe even two months. I've been trying to think of a great way to make this video. Uh, I don't like making just negative reviews or just bashing companies on their products because I just don't like doing that. But with that said, this camera is the exact same thing as this one. So if you wanna see me break it this down, I already did a video on it. I'll leave a link in the description below. The only difference between the two is this shoots a little bit larger format of paper. Uh, it's a four by four. It's pretty much the same size as a Polaroid picture, just the inner part of the photo, just no frame. And I was gonna do a full breakdown of this one, but I, it's just, I've already, I've already done it. It's the same one as this. So I will dive into some of the other things I've learned about it because I think it's still a really cool thing to have. And I do like the form factor over this one. This thing is huge. You can't really put this thing in your pocket. This fits in your pocket. Now, if you're familiar with the Polaroid high print, which I also did a video on that a couple of years ago, I think it was a while ago. That's uh, the same size of paper that this puts out. It's a two by three. It's nearly the size of an uh, Fuji Instax. Uh, photo. I do love the aesthetics. The design of it is really cool. It has a retro look, hence the name. But it falls short in so many areas where it's... Ah, ah. I took this to San Francisco recently on a trip and I was quickly reminded how I don't like shooting photos like street photography or just out and about, you know, shots with these types of cameras. <laughs> They're very frustrating uh, to, to use. They're very slow in shooting. Now this could be totally, totally, totally fixed with just one thing, one little aspect that could make these cameras amazing. And I even had a conversation to Kodak when I did the review of this one and they're like, that's an amazing idea. Well, how, about, how about we implement that? And so when they want to send me this guy, I was kind of excited. I was hoping this is like a version two of it because you know, it, it makes sense. But no, it's exactly the same. And what I'm talking about is having internal storage. An SD card slot would be amazing or even just internal storage of any kind because if you shoot a photo you have to print it right then and there otherwise it's it, you throw it away why is that such a, a, a negative thing when it comes to this well you have to wait for this thing to warm up to even print a photo and how long is it check this out this is real time print speed from the very first time you turn it on and take a picture check it out It takes several minutes to get one photo, but it's not like that every single time. If you are going out and you shoot your first photo, that's what you expect. You're walking around for a couple more minutes, you take another photo, the time is cut in half because it's already warmed up. Now, if you turn it off and put it in your pocket and walk around for 10, 15 minutes, yeah, you're gonna have to wait for that thing to warm up again. 
This is not a street photography camera. And that's pretty much what I do. I walk around and shoot photos and yeah, that's great. These really shine in a party environment. You have friends over and just passing it around, taking a picture, indoor use. This is where it shines. It's really fun and super cool. And it also features Bluetooth. You can shoot on your phone, print it on the device, which I actually highly recommend doing that. And I also did a comparison of that um, in this video of shooting with my phone versus shooting with this and printing it. The quality is drastically better. <laughs> the overall print quality of the photos would be, you know, as expected, to be honest. They're not amazing, but they're not like horrible. Um, it does do a fairly good job. It's definitely like an old like web camera from like the early 2000s, I think they packed in this thing. But the option to have Bluetooth functionality in the form of being able to print, you know, from your phone, that's what I'm trying to say. It's super cool and makes it totally worth it. It's almost like the camera functionality is just this added bonus. The other thing I noticed about this, they use the same screen as the uh, Retro 3, and they just added little guidelines to the screen to where you need to frame your shots. So if you are framing your shot based on the whole screen, don't do that. You are going to have incorrect <laughs> photo coming out of this thing because it's not framed and lined up correctly. So that's something to keep in mind. It has you know, the same options as like borderless with a border. Uh, you can do like monochrome, sepia tones. Like you, you can have some fun filters, but it is limited. But yeah, you don't have the option to save the photo and print later, which would be huge with these cameras. Uh, otherwise, you're just at the mercy of standing there and waiting for your photo to be printed. And you can't just stick it in your pocket unless you're wearing like a hoodie or something with you know, the front little pouch pocket because the photo it comes in and out of the thing. You have, you have to be holding it. And if you're not paying attention, the photo falls off and flies away. I had that happen multiple times with this guy. Do I hate it? No, I don't hate this, this camera. I know it sounds like a lot of negative and it sounds like I'm encouraging you not to buy it. No, it's actually really, really cool. I do enjoy shooting it, just not outside and with walking around. Like it's really great for inside use only and anticipate just shooting one or two photos and putting it away. If you want to shoot multiple photos in a row, this is not the camera you know, for you unless you have a lot of patience because it will take a while. One of the other things that's kind of a bummer is their paper, it's not sticker paper, like uh, Polaroid, the high print is. You have the option of having just the photo, but you also have the option to peel it and you have yourself a little sticker, you can stick it on stuff. I really like that idea. It's really great for you know, scrapbooking and other things, and you, you, know, you can't do it with the Kodak stuff, which it's interesting. They do look similar though. Let me go find out. Let me go grab my high print. All right, this is the Polaroid high print. This is sticker paper. These look awfully similar. I wonder if they are the same. Wish I noticed this sooner, because I wonder if you just bought Polaroid high print paper, which is sticker paper, you could put it in this thing. Let's see what happens. All right, took my photo. There it is. Now I'm gonna hit print. <sighs> so frustrating, you have to wait. I wasn't even that long ago. Okay, here we go, it's printing. <laughs> I just stuck a Polaroid pack in the Kodak and it's printing. It's working. so long. <laughs> there we go. So the Polaroid, you can actually then take this and peel it and you get yourself a sticker or you can leave it alone. The Polaroid high print film, film, paper. It, it, it totally works. So if you're after the sticker option and the camera functionality in your pocket, you can actually swap them and interchange them uh, and vice versa because the Kodak paper is a lot cheaper. Yeah, you get uh, 20 photos of high print for $19.99 and you can find 60 photos of the uh, Kodak for about $30-ish, $30, $40. It's a lot cheaper, but it's on a sticker. I like the sticker option, just saying. All right, so who, who is this camera for exactly? Well, for the price point of this thing, because this guy right here is around $140 ish somewhere in there on Amazon. They fluctuate, they go up and down. There's deals to be had 
fairly frequently I've noticed, and plus like bundle deals on paper and things. So I'd keep an eye out for that. But like right now, just for the camera, I was looking on Amazon and they're $140, $150. But does that make it a bad product? No, it really comes down to personal preference. I would say this would be great for like a younger generation or just somebody who wants to get their feet wet with an instant photography type camera, because it does offer that. You take a picture and prints it out right there on the spot and you have something physical. It's really, really cool in that aspect, but there's a lot of patience that you would have to have for this. And I just wish it did have an SD card slot or some way to store photos. And I'd shoot with a lot more because I could go out, I could shoot all the photos I want, come back home and then print them out manually, the ones I want to print out. That'd be really cool. But that's, those are the only two real negatives, to be honest, about this thing. Um, and so I would love to know your thoughts on this. Do you have it? Do you plan on getting it? Let me know in the comments below. Let's chat. So that's all I got for you in today's video. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one. Now, get out there. Make some art.